The few days before we left Hanoi, it was really warm and t-shirt weather. Then the first day we get here, it's freezing. These are the only warm clothes I bought, brought for a whole week. I'm in a small village outside of Hanoi, Vietnam. This is where my mother-in-law lives. It's in the province of Haizung, which is first mentioned in literature in 1498. And then the, a small town was founded in 1804. In 1968, it became the capital of the province of Haizung. This is the halfway point between the capital of the north and the largest port in the north. So it's kind of just a rest stop, and then it evolved into a city of about two or three million people, and the province itself has about six or seven million people. Uh, about five or six kilometers from my mother-in-law's house, there's a giant cathedral that was built by the French in the late 1800s or early 1900s. I can't actually find a date for when it was constructed, at least in the English literature, um, but it's definitely late 19th century uh, French Catholic. My first stop is the cemetery. There's a fascinating mix of Buddhist and Catholic uh, symbology. Graves are traditional Buddhist graves, but you can see that there's crosses and references to Jesus and Mary uh, strung throughout. The surrounding villages are 100% Buddhist cemeteries, and then this village has all Catholic cemeteries, which I thought was really fascinating. You can see in this picture the spire of the cathedral we're about to visit. In a lot of the rural cathedrals in the north, there's a really fascinating mix of Catholic architecture and Buddhist architecture. You can see some very slight Buddhist cues in the repeating patterns on the roofs, but this, I believe, is mostly French Gothic or uh, French Gothic Catholic architecture. Part of the French colonial philosophy was to bring Catholicism to Indochina. It became much more popular in the south it's actually kind of rare for people to still be practicing Catholicism in the north, but you see it a little bit. In small shops in Hanoi, you'll see little uh, shrines to Mary and, and all that. This is a very French cathedral, but in future videos I'm going to be going over a couple of big cathedrals that have a lot more Buddhist influence, and they're just absolutely beautiful, but I'm very far from them right now. Uh, during Vietnam's through revolution, they uh, just left their, cult their uh, previous cultural buildings in disrepair, uh, contrary to the Chinese Cultural Revolution where they actually actively destroyed them. During the economic reforms of the late 90s and early thousands after the Soviet Union collapsed, Vietnam started investing in repairing their cultural heritage sites. This church uh, had large renovations done in 2005. Uh, the facade is most likely original, but a lot of it has definitely been repaired. I was not able to get inside of it, unfortunately, uh, mostly because it's Tet, and I think they only let people in during high Catholic holidays. Uh, maybe Sunday services, but I've never actually been here on a Sunday, so I don't know.
Uh, my name's Alan. I'm a sound engineer and photographer based in Hanoi, Vietnam. I'm doing photography and historic videos. If this is content you're interested in, a comment, a like, or even a subscribe would do a lot to help me grow this channel. Um, this is something I'm very passionate about, and North Vietnam is very and a very inspiring place for me. Uh, and I'd like to be able to share that with more people, and I will be able to with your help. Vote in your local elections, and uh, thank you, goodbye.